Um, six years involved in social media, I suppose, coming from a pure background, um, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, it became increasingly evident how much we needed to, to share online, how much we needed to, to get on top of, of what the opportunity was with social. Um, and, and from there, my kind of experience has grown. And now I work with clients like Mars Ireland, National Lottery, um, Westbury Hotel, um, and look at building their story online. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. later. I'm two years in uh, the lovely team in Edelman, um, of which I'm, I'm an associate director, um, and six months um, with the uh, head of digital title, um, which, is, um, which is great because from, from an Edelman Ireland perspective, although we're a small team, we, as I think Rob alluded to, we're the biggest PR company in the world. Um, we have over about 4,000 employees and, and a thousand of which are, are, are actually focused solely on digital. So some really, really great stuff from our perspective coming out of the west coast of America um, and right through into to the UK and into Ireland. Um, I'm four months a dad. This is a picture of my beautiful daughter, Leah, which I couldn't get away without putting up on screen. Um, I'm one month on the board of Triathlon Ireland, which for me is a really exciting opportunity. Um, the sport is just, is just growing at a phenomenal pace. Um, particularly if you look at, uh, at the registrations and membership that it's grown in the last two or three years alone. But it has a huge, huge opportunity ahead of it and, and I'm excited to be part of that journey. Um, and I suppose, last but not least, I'm a lifelong sports fan and particularly a, a Tipperary fan. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the, the right result in September, but, uh, but we'll live to fight another day. What I actually want to, to talk about today is, is about promoting and protecting your brand, but it's in a particular, particular way, which is storytelling at the speed of now. Um, back in the, the 80s, our friend uh, Gordon Gecko said this, the most val valuable commodity is information. Uh, by the time he had returned a little greyer in uh, 2010, he had this to say, and he said the most valuable commodity is time. And I think that change um, sums up what we've seen from a communications perspective, because now if we look at a, a minute online, this is what's happening every 60 seconds in terms of content that's being created, shared, consumed across an ever-widening number of channels. So the reality is, is from a brand and from a sports organization perspective, it's a huge challenge to cut through that clutter. Um, so, you know, with all this content, um, how do we how do we cut through it? And from an Edmund perspective, you know, we'd agree with the, the expression content is king, but what we would say is that we need to be asking what type of content we're sharing. So what's its strengths, what's its value, um, and what is it in service to? Um, and from our perspective, um, we, we would zero in on the fact that a story is what you need to be telling, and, and contents need to, need, to be, need to be telling that. And why a story? Well, first of all, because it works. If, if, you, can, if you can put a fact wrapped in a story, um, it'll not just increase its, its sharing power, but it'll also make it way more memorable. Um, Cognitive psychologist Jerome Bruner said this fact um, through his research is that a, a fact is a, in a story is, is 22 times more memorable. And I said, well, we'll, we'll take a, just a try at this. And this was done very late uh, yesterday evening. So, so it's not the, the full story. But say we took a, a fact from, from last Saturday and we said, Tommy Bow scored a try. We said, great, yeah, we're all delighted Tommy Bow scored a try. But it gives us nothing about the context of the story of, of what that fact is. If we were to put a little bit extra on it, and we say Tommy Bow intercepted a pass in his own half before running nearly the entire length of the field to set Ireland on the way to a hard-fought victory uh, over Australia. Suddenly, the story becomes way more memorable, and that fact becomes way more important. Um, from the Edelman Trust Barometer, Rob mentioned um, uh, the kind of work we do in the area of reputation. Uh, a key facet of that is our, is our annual Trust Barometer, which we'll be launching at the end of January this year. But one of the things that's come up from it um, is that 64% of people need to hear a message three to five times before believing it. So we're thinking, right, we need to tell a good story, but we also, need, we also know that we need to now tell it three, or four, three to five times before people will actually believe our message. Um, we also know that from the way the world has changed that people are engaging with brands all the time. So before, it used to be very much based around particular campaigns, used to be just kind of peaks and troughs. Um, however, with the advent of social, is that your customers, your, your audience, is there to engage um, right throughout the year. So if you think of this, this pulse, um, kind of like the vitality of your brand, we have to find ways to make sure that we're keeping the story consistent throughout, throughout the year. Um, 
in, in Edelman, we use, a, I think we call the, the media cloverleaf, um, which, which looks at kind of four main quadrants in terms of storytelling. Um, on the top left, you have the traditional news. Um, this is, is grabbed from the Sunday Times, apologies for that, but, um, and it talks about the, the clean sweep of Ireland's uh, uh, autumn internationals. And down at the bottom left, you have a story from the uh, own channels, which is the RFU's own website, which, which is talking about the significance of the win and the impact on its rankings. Moving over into the bottom right, um, you have a, a social, and this is a, a tweet from the RFU sharing the reaction through the, the press conference live after the game. And finally, um, but, but not least, uh, up on the right is hybrid media, which would include the likes of Joe.ie, and they're actually sharing fans' reaction to the story. So you can actually see how the story has travelled around all four quadrants. Right in the centre, and these symbols here represent search and research. So that's at the stem of, of the cloverleaf. And they're vitally important. The reality is, to tell a good story, you need to know well, what your audience are interested in, um, where, they, where they're going to, to read a story, and, and what their behavior is like. You also, crucially important at the center of it, is, is a um, uh, amplification. So you need to know when you need to give your story the fuel to get through as many of these quadrants as possible. I should say, it doesn't always have to be across all four quadrants, but, but the ideal story would. To a couple of storytelling principles. Um, I suppose for, from our perspective, we've looked at it and said, right, there's kind of three main principles that we can, we can tie down that if you get these, you're talking about creating the ideal content and the ideal story. On, on the, the bottom left there, you see relevant and brand priorities. Um, this is crucially important. You know, there's no point telling a story that's not yours to tell. If your brand that just gets involved um, and you have absolutely no relevance with the story, it's just it's just not going to make uh, make any difference to your brand. Secondly, um, it needs to be timely. And, and like if we talk about storytelling, the speed of now, this becomes absolutely crucial. So you need to be on trend when the trend is happening, not not a week later. And we've all seen that. We've all seen the very clever brands that have got on board, and we'll show some examples, right then at the moment when the trend, when the conversation trend is happening. But we've also all probably seen brands that come in a week or two late to the party, and you can say, right, that's, that's way too late to be joining this conversation. Um, the, the last piece is that you know it clearly needs to be resonant. It needs to resonate with what your audience are interested in. Um, and you know, looking at the search and research elements of this helps you to define well, well, what your audience is, is, is interested in. If you get the three of these, you know, we'd say that you're kind of creating the ideal content and you're creating a really good story, but that's not enough. You do have to share it, so you have to consider what's your amplification, what's your paid media that you're going to put behind this to, to share it as, as, as much as possible. I'm going to go through a, a couple examples. You'll be familiar with, with most of them, just to kind of show you where these principles come to life. Um, if we look at the, the O2 tribute to Brian O'Driscoll, um, it had many of the principles of great storytelling, in, in my opinion. Um, as a longtime supporter of Irish rugby, um, they were absolutely the right brand to pay tribute to Brian. Um, but also, the way they used the public support for Brian, um, for, for, for everything he'd achieved over the years on the rugby pitch and off the rugby pitch, um, they were able to pull together a, a, a collage of user-generated tributes to him which put their, their audience right at the centre of the story. And obviously, you know, Brian O'Driscoll's uh, retirement was mooted, felt like 10 years out, but, but certainly mooted well in advance. So they knew when it was going to happen, so they were able to, to pull all this together right on time. Um, one that's, that's just recently um, come up is, is Toyota's What Drives You, um, a, which features, I won't play the video, but it, it features um, Stephen Cluxton, an Irish out half, uh, Johnny Sexton, um, again, you see the use of an unbranded hashtag, which O2 had with, with 13, but, um, but above all else, I, I love the fact that this piece was timed to coincide when there would be maximum interest in what drives Johnny Sexton. It's also totally relevant with the, with the brand Toyota, um, and, and it will resonate with, with the audience. Um, further afield, um, if, you, if you look at, at this, um, this is something that EA Sports created, it's called the, the Madden Giferator, and basically, uh, anyone that follows sports and social will just know how phenomenally important gifts are at telling the story. Um, and, and brands and, and sports organizations need to tap into that. Um, what they've done is that they've uh, created a, a platform which allows you to create and share your own personalized gifts in real time. So I can 
put whatever pictures I want to, into this, put my own message and send it on to, to my friends. So, you know, look, if it was in the Premiership and if I'm a United fan, I could send it on to a Liverpool fan to taunt him. I could send it on to, to if it was the, the, the Irish rugby match, there's a lot more you could do with it as well. So what I, what I love about this is it's real time, it's absolutely relevant, um, uh, and it's given control over to, to the audience. Uh, I'm talking about giving control over to the audience, um, you know, and it's interesting. I was talking to Kieran um, about fandom, and I think that's that's something that this this plays into. But the Utah Jazz uh, in the NBA, they collate all the different videos from um, from their users shared on, on Instagram, from the fans shared on Instagram, and pull them all together into this collage. So you can see any particular moment in the match from the from the views of the uh, of the of the fans, which I think is a really really powerful thing. Um, obviously, from the from the people that get selected, it puts them right at the heart of the story, um, and uh, and and I think it works really really well. And here's just a, a short video. I should say that um, since I had this included, sorry, one sec. We're having trouble. It's the, one of the biggest days in the Irish sporting life and the cultural life of Ireland. The free to be. Oh. You have to see it to believe it. I like this game. Well done, lads. You've lost the ball on that bombshell. I'll see you all at Christmas. No, I, I absolutely love it. It's not just because it's, it's from a Tipperary hurling club, but um, it's because it represents the essence of, of Ireland, the essence of the GEA. Um, now, I know that uh, uh, World Team Sport have done an absolutely excellent uh, one, which is kind of similar to this, which features like the Brian O'Driscoll, which I'm sure will do very, very well as well. Um, but I, I thought when I saw this, and the minute I saw this, I was like, what a smart idea from, from guys in, you know, in a hurling club in Tip. And, you know, huge opportunity there, potentially for a brand to have got involved or to told that story or maybe help get the lads home, who knows. Um, but, but really, really excellent storytelling. So we've talked a little bit about the principles of storytelling, um, but we've also talked as well about uh, storytelling now and, and the importance of being ready now. Um, this is, is a quote for our, our stat from 2013, which said 53% of marketers worldwide said they, man, they plan to make greater use of real-time data. Um, which is a huge amount, and I'm sure if you went and, and, and did that poll again now in 2014, it would be way, way higher. Um, and it, it does lead us to, to think, well, right, you know, are we missing opportunities by not looking at now? Um, and I suppose 
you know, we might realize that we're missing opportunities, but the secondary question is, are we actually prepared to engage? Are we set up to engage? Do we have the process in place to engage, um, to engage in now? Um, in Edwin, we've created something called the, the Creative Newsroom, and, and essentially the Creative Newsroom is a process which is designed to create and share stories um, that, that reach, resonate with, and inspire action with the audiences where, when, and how they, they need it. Um, the, the Creative Newsroom is based on a, on a thoughtful approach which makes it less scary than, than, than what that might sound. Um, and essentially it looks at saying, right, 80% of our content, it would typically be planned in advance. So there's a lot of things like we mentioned, um, O2, um, 13 campaign that you just know are going to happen. So you can have that all planned in advance, you can have really great content ready to go out and you just release it on the time when the, when the conversation trend is at its highest. And then, the 20%, which is the real time and opportunistic, and this is the much more difficult thing for brands and sports organizations to get around to, um, but it has, it has huge potential, and we'll, we'll show you an example of that later. Looking at the 80%, um, uh, I kind of mentioned as a United fan. This one is uh, this one is great. It's from a couple of years back when um, Alex Ferguson was coming to the end of his tenure at, uh, at Old Trafford. Um, and Xbox put up this post which basically said, achievement unlocked, Fergie time complete. Very, very simple, time to absolute perfection. They were able to obviously plan it well in advance um, and the reaction it got online was absolutely phenomenal. So how do we set up the, the process to work? And this is what it looks like and it, I, you know, it might be hard for you guys to see it down there and I'm not gonna go through it, through it all. However, um, the basics of it are first you have a kind of editorial newsroom that look at cultural trends, look at, uh, at conversations that are happening online, identify um, whether it's relevant to the brand, um, and then we have a whole load of checks and balances and traffic light system um, before we actually end up with kind of creative concepts being written, drawn up, approved by clients, and then creative execution, and right through then to, to um, publishing and, and distribution uh, and amplification. So just to, I think that, the kind of best example, uh, and this wasn't done by the, the creative newsroom process, but it shows you how it can come to life. Again, this is an oldie, but it's just, it's a superb piece of, of work, and I think worth showing again. I suppose that, that moment has been kind of held up there, and we've probably all seen it before uh, as the kind of the daddy of real-time marketing, because it just shows the phenomenal potential if you're set up to actually execute like that. And, and that's the key. You need to actually be set up to execute it. Like, if we were to look at that, I don't know the inner workings of the team that, that did this, but we can assume that they, they, first of all, they were listening, they were looking out, they were listening to conversations, well, what are people talking about? Um, then they obviously identified a moment and they thought, well, right, can we come up with a creative concept? And they came up with the concept, you know, ran it through and said, will it work? Um, and and got, finally got, got approval from the client and, and published it. And all that happened, that whole process happened in less than 20 minutes, which shows you the timely element of it. And the impact is absolutely phenomenal. So, you know, much like our, the own processes, this is designed to keep us all true to what we're actually trying to, trying to achieve and also make sure that both from a, you know, in a, in a stakeholder perspective and from whether it's an internal team or an agency team that are executing it, everybody knows that there's enough checks and balances there to, to make sure that it's the right thing to do. 
So if we were to look at um, the creative newsroom and how it could have maybe affected the, the match on Saturday, we would have been looking in and saying, right, well, this is the sort of conversation that was going on. We see that this doesn't actually count in Facebook, this, this graph, but it shows that there was about 20,000 tweets on, on the day of the match. Um, it also shows you different hashtags that people are using. So you'll see there, there's, uh, there's five different ones that have kind of come out on top. There was actually a whole lot of other ones that were being used as well. Um, and it starts to give us some of the kind of terms that are coming up over and over again. Um, so, you know, you'd be looking into this and say, well, right, where's, where's the moment? Where's the moment that we could potentially join? And then uh, this happens. which is like, we've all come to expect that from Pauly, but it's a, a pretty phenomenal, uh, phenomenal moment. Um, and you know, I was at the match and you felt the, the actual surge in the crowd when that moment happened. Um, but the surge was also shown on Twitter and all these tweets, and I've just selected a few of them here, all these tweets just exploded into life about, about the great man. Um, you know, if you were there and prepared with your creative newsroom, you'd say, right, actually, do you know what? This is the moment. This is where we execute. It actually wouldn't have taken a rocket scientist to think at some stage during the match, Paul O'Connell was going to do a big hit that was going to send somebody backwards. So you could have actually nearly been prepared in advance. Um, and if you had done it, you saw this from the, the GIF before, is that you can imagine um, Paulie there with a you shall not pass piece. Something like that could have been very simply created, done and dusted, um, but could have joined that conversation right on the moment. Similarly, uh, when, when Tommy Bow scored that incredible try, um, and this, I love this piece of content from Sportsfile, who obviously with a nod to Ryle Nugent um, have, a, have a, you know, perfect imagery and really sum up the moment. You could take that and, and in turn, perhaps, you know, you could, I'm using GIFs as, as the example, but there's any number of creatives that you could, you could turn it into, and you could turn it into something that looked a little bit like this. Obviously, that's not Tommy Bow, just in case anyone was questioning there. Um, but but the potential potential with it with this, if you're geared up to it, um, is absolutely phenomenal. But you have to be geared up to it. You have to have the right processes. You have to have creatives in the room. You have to have clients there, and everyone needs to be ready to push the button and say, "Right, we're going now," because that's when people are talking about it. Um, so I've talked a lot about the the, the kind of promote piece and and, and promote. Um, is a key part of, of protecting your reputation as well because if you have positive interactions with brands and sports organizations over time you'll, uh, you, you'll, you'll definitely be more open to them when things go a little bit, a little bit askew. Uh, from the storytelling um, uh, protect perspective, as I said, there's, there's promote and protect and right at the center is this kind of always ready newsroom that uses analytics, monitoring and, and is, is prepared to respond. Um, what, I, what I like to do is, as, it's not a sports one, but it's a, I think it's a very good example. I would say that because it's an Edelman example, but um, I'm going to bring you to a, some work that we did around when SuperValue announced that it was um, changing the names of the super stores to, to super values. Um, so, you know, around the time of the announcement, we saw th these sort of tweets, um, which, you know, you hear one on the left, hearing that Supergun is being sold to Musgraves with significant support staff job losses, bad news, Supergun to read news to follow plus redundancies so there's all this negative sentiment that's just about to kick off um, you know we published across Twitter um, we've talking about the important news we have all super 24 stores we renamed the super value in February 2014 we also did it multi-platform so we went across Facebook across news sites and across all news media as well um, but we didn't just just stop there and, and it's important that the lesson is not to just stop there you need to bring the personal touch of the brand to the fore so we actually went about responding to every single tweet and post um, that was put up on the topic over the course of, of four or five days um, which meant you know a huge amount of work but we were prepared to it we planned for it for three or four months in advance we had about three thousand it felt um, different uh, uh, potential responses all edited for different um, uh, formats um, and platforms and it meant though that people that had concerns about the story about what was happening we were able to go back to them individually correct the course tell the true story that we wanted to to get out there um, and there's a whole load of things in there some of you'll remember it. it it was the the super queen sausage seemed to be the big thing on trend at that time um which which was interesting in itself um, and it turned what was potentially you know a, a negative situation online um into somewhat of a positive you know some of the some of the kind of tweets and, and credits that that the the super value team got after and super Queen team got after it were were excellent. But you know 
the lesson in terms of protection is is you have to be prepared. You know, like people are. I've lost count during the time you'll, 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 you'll talk in, in kind of things like this and, and people will know the importance of, of crisis preparation, but actually if you were to ask them, are they prepared for a crisis, they'd say no. Um, and and that, you know, that has to change. People need to be prepared. Well, what are your systems when things go wrong? There's a whole load of things that you can actually test and say, well, right, these are the likely scenarios around my brand, around my sports organization, and you need to be fully prepared for it so that you can get out there quick, be very, very responsive. And, and that's it. And it brings me to the second point about being responsive. It, it's not it, too many times we see people, you know, put up a holding statement and then just totally disappear for way too long. Um, in the meantime, they could have hundreds, thousands of tweets, posts, comments from from their customers who are actually genuinely concerned about an issue. And it's really, really important that that brands, sports organisations understand that is that going back to them individually, if possible, um, is 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 definitely the way. But certainly understanding what messages they're looking for and making sure you get it to them um, in, in one way or the other is, 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 is really, really important. I could talk, if we were talking outside social, about the importance of search in all of this, because during the middle of a crisis, uh, when people go looking for your brand, um, search is vitally important, because Google, Google is the new homepage, so you put it in there about whatever it is, and you're going to get all the negative news first, unless you're actually prepared to make sure that your story is top there in the search results, and that's what you need to bear in mind. We, you could talk about that for, for, for another session. Uh, before I leave you, just kind of five key takeaways. Um, first, and, and, and probably most important, because if you don't get this right, you're not going to get anything else right, is, is research. Um, you really need to research what your audience is after, um, what their behavior behaviors like online and, and, and where they go to. You need to be relevant to, to, your, to your brand. Um, as I said, there's no point telling somebody else's story. Um, you absolutely need to, to resonate with the audience and your research will give you clues as to what does resonate with them. You need to be timely. Um, we've talked about, a bit about you know, winning that moment um, and you need to be prepared to do that. And, and fifth, um, you need to be prepared to amplify. You know, there's, there's, it's great telling a good story, but you need people to see it as well. So you need to be able to, to, to prepare for that.